Kiln-forming glass can yield results that range from elegantly simple to intriguingly complex. But when a piece emerges from the kiln cracked or broken, the results are just disappointing. The good news is that a piece always breaks for a reason. Understanding the working properties of the material can keep it from happening. This lesson will cover two of the most common causes of a piece breaking, thermal shock and improper annealing. You will learn what thermal shock is and how to avoid it, the consequences of poor annealing, and ways to anneal successfully, and considerations for designing firing schedules for different types of pieces. Thermal shock is caused by either heating or cooling a piece too rapidly while the glass is behaving like a solid. As glass heats and cools, it expands and contracts. Because glass is an excellent insulator, heating or cooling it too quickly results in uneven temperatures throughout the body of the piece. Uneven temperatures cause uneven expansion within the glass. This, in turn, leads to stress within the piece, seen here as light blooming across the surface. If too much stress builds up, the glass will break into pieces with sharp edges. When glass thermal shocks during heating, it suddenly blows apart. In the case of low process temperatures such as slumping, the pieces of the broken plate will slump separately. These pieces won't fit back together after the firing because they slumped on different areas of the mold. And the edges won't soften because there isn't enough heat involved. Glass that thermal shocks on the way up to a higher process temperature will have softened edges because it's been brought to a temperature at which it flows. Thermal shock can also be caused by cooling too rapidly. Take special care with pieces that have just come out of the kiln because a sudden drop to room temperature can introduce enough stress to cause thermal shock. Temperature differences that lead to thermal shock are often amplified in work that has uneven thicknesses. Parts placed on top of continuous layers will insulate the glass beneath them, leading to uneven heating and internal stress. The way to avoid this kind of thermal shock is to slow down heating and cooling rates to account for any uneven thickness within a piece. Another factor to consider in avoiding thermal shock is how the piece is set up in a particular kiln. Kilns that have only top heating elements tend to fire hotter in the center, while kilns that have only side elements tend to fire hotter around the perimeter. In either case, firing a piece that covers the entire surface of a shelf may set up a temperature difference that can lead to thermal shock. To counter this difference, we recommend a slower initial heating rate and a more conservative cooldown. Another common reason for pieces breaking related to firing is inadequate annealing. The goal of annealing is to prevent strain in the finished work. If a piece cools too rapidly in the annealing range, it will be under stress. This can lead to what we see here a curvilinear break. Note that the results of poor annealing are unpredictable. The piece may break in the kiln, a week after you take it out of the kiln, or a year down the road. The first step in successfully annealing your piece is to calculate its final thickness. The goal here is to keep the internal temperature differences below 5 degrees Celsius. Temperature differences higher than this can lead to permanent strain. Once you work out the final thickness, follow the annealing hold and cooling rates found on Bullseye's annealing chart for thick slabs. Because glass is an excellent insulator, cooling rates get longer as pieces get thicker. Pieces with varying thicknesses tend to cool unevenly. To compensate for this, calculate how thick the finished piece will be in its thickest area. Then use the anneal soak and cooling cycle for a piece that is twice as thick as the piece will be in its thickest area. This will allow the entire body of glass to stay within the safe 5 degree temperature range. 
A quick way to check for annealing strain is to view the piece under polarized light. When light passes through a transparent glass object, any strain will bend the light's path. This otherwise invisible shift is revealed when viewed through two polarized light filters. With this piece, we underannealed the work and let it cool at a rate too fast relative to its thickness. Polarized light reveals a dark rainbow where light is bent by the strain within the piece. This strain will remain present in the glass until either the piece fails or the strain is removed through reannealing. To remove this strain, refire the piece above 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, then properly anneal and cool according to its calculated thickness. One of the most important things to consider when designing a firing schedule is the nature of the object you plan to fire. A factor that affects initial heating rates is initial thickness. A stack of independent layers can be heated more rapidly than a solid piece of the same thickness. This is because the individual layers can expand and move independently without building the kind of stress that leads to thermal shock. The solid block must be heated more conservatively to avoid temperature differences that can cause thermal shock. The variations in thickness we see in some tack fusings are cause for special consideration in the heat up and cool down phases of a firing. In this example, a piece of billet is stacked on a base fusing. This will insulate the area under the stack, increasing the likelihood of thermal shock. To prevent this, the first step is to slow the initial heating rate. Upon cooling, this thicker area will hold its heat longer, preventing the piece from cooling uniformly. To compensate for this, use an annealing cycle for a piece that is twice as thick as the fired piece will be in its thickest area. Once you understand how to avoid thermal shock and how to properly anneal, you can feel confident designing a firing schedule for any piece.